Our state has some incredible problems. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. I'm here to talk about that with you and talk about the trends that have shaped this state and dragged us in one direction or another. We're not really doing what, we're not realizing the dream we had way back in the early 2000s or even around 2008 or nine or 10. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. Welcome to Wild Biz Nebraska. We're gonna get it on right now. Does your company need to turn on the juice? Are you looking for more energy, more motivation, more uh, aspiration for excellence? If so, stick around. That's a huge issue th these days in Nebraska and everywhere, frankly. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. I'm here with Bruce Arendt. Thank goodness he's here for me. <laughs> and uh, we, are, uh, we are set to do an exceptional show with you right here with Wild Biz Nebraska. Bruce, uh, how you been since I last saw you? Things good? It's never been better. Yes. Your book popped up in the toy box in my home. It did. It jumped up to the very top, and I said, well, I'm going to lead the next show off and find some <laughs> metaphor, you know, like sleep is relaxation. Yeah. Yeah. And we're very anxious in this culture yeah, right we now. Are. Everybody's we are. kind of uptight. You see how I segue into this? <laughs> that was smooth. That was a smooth segue. All right, so here we go. Okay. I've got this phrase, and I think some of my friends know about this. I care greatly about it. And I think it's absolutely the perfect message that if I were a, a CEO or a business owner or whatever, and I kind of wanted to say something to my people because right. they seem a little blah and not that enthused about the work they're doing. Right. And I could give you some great statistics along those lines. Um, they're looking for something. And I think what I'm going to share right now, with your help, okay. I'll we're gonna, we're gonna give it to the whole world and we're gonna talk about juice and so here we go. Okay. Are you ready? Let's we're go. gonna flip these big sheets of paper. These are notes that uh, were sitting on my wall, covering my entire wall. So it's a, it's a little rough around the edges. Please don't uh, be judgmental here. But the key is the message and the message that managers are eager to, uh, to share. So here we go. It's street smart, radiant energy that David had and Goliath didn't. Ah, Go right okay. ahead. It's that tangible, intangible. It's, it is juice. It's juice. <laughs> okay. It's how a fire can warm you, even though the air that separates you is frigid. Ah. It's physics and beyond physics. It's key, it's chi, it's life energy. Huh? That rhymes. It does. Yeah. Keep on going now. We have momentum. It's juice. It's juice. I'm stuck on this juice thing. Okay. okay. It's the taste. You're going to love this. Okay. It's the taste of your quality. Think about that. Yeah. If somebody came up to me and said, the taste of your quality is outstanding, I would go, I don't know what that means, but I love it. That's actually a great it, It's a wonderful concept. thing. Go on, go on. It's the spark inside that exists to set off the spark inside others. Oh, wee. Yeah. It's getting better now. It is getting better. Here we yeah. go. It's the light that shines from within. Okay, okay. I've been dying to say that to you for about 30 years now. <laughs> go ahead. It is what is most human about you. Oh, man. Hmm. It's bold, it's idealistic, and it's juicy. Okay. Yeah. It's the spirit behind your greatest truth. And you know what? It's, it's you, really, really you. Are you sure? <laughs> it's what transports you and elevates you. Okay, we're wrapping up. Okay. This is, we're, we're climbing a mountain here, a psychological mountain. That would mountain. be like an escalator. Oh, man. So here it is. It's juice. Reclaim it, share it, and be grateful for it. Okay, turn on the juice and never look never back. Never look back. Never look back. Awesome, man. Awesome job. And, and, and I know that the people that are watching this show are looking for somebody to high five right around them. They just know it. They're picking up on it. Oh. it it's quantum energy <laughs> is what we're talking about right now. And I, we're having a good time with it. But I have to tell you, burnout is a, is a major issue these days yeah. uh, in, in employee groups. And uh, I've seen it firsthand. I've been part of these kinds of groups uh, over the years. And of course, as a consultant, tried to accelerate uh, some, some energy and so on. And the, the beauty is, is that if things change, uh, the group is looking for something. Right. Right. But if something doesn't change, uh, uh, it can be pretty, over 43%, I believe this is an accurate number. I just saw it this week. 43% of all employees are making plans to leave in three to six months. Wow, that's not, that's not good. Oh my goodness, and think about the amount of time, money, I, th I believe it's at least $24,000 per person is the last time I, I read something that said, what does it cost to hire a recruiter, advertise, yeah. 
do the whole interviewing thing, select one, yeah. ramp up, train them. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the biggest part of that thing is training people, getting them up to speed so, you know, yeah. they can do the job. That's and, and, and most companies don't do that great a job bringing people on. Yeah. Yeah. And then they kind of figure out, wait a minute, I, this is a little different than I was thinking. Right. By then right. it's it's a little bit late. But anyway, turn on the juice and uh, uh, be really, really, you be the person that you really are. Be the authentic person that you want to be even at the office. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'll make people want to be, well, like I say, it spreads that whole spark. You know? you would, yeah, you would think so. It you would think so. It should work that yeah, way. Yeah, it should yeah. work that way. Listen, um, as, you, as you might know, and many of the people that are watching the show right now are wondering, where are we on this ARPA money? This is the federal money that has been promised to uh, various parts of our economy, you know. And one of the most prominent um, aspects or organizations is North Omaha and South Omaha. Okay. Uh, because of the COVID thing, they suffered uh, in those communities even more than all of us did. Right. All right, and we, we all know that. That isn't, uh, that, that, that's not new news. So the question is, how can, the, uh, and I think it's about 178 million, give or take, uh, to both North, South, North and South Omaha. Okay. Uh, um, so I, I, I think you know, and, and I'll share with our audience, we, we have been, I say we, the Nebraska consulting team has been working with uh, a very interesting group of architects, and I'm gonna drop their name right now. They're new to our community. Hmm. They're called Emergent Architecture, wow. Emergent. Uh, they were out of Cedar Falls and Cedar Rapids, Iowa, okay. and then they've expanded. Uh, and a gentleman named Patrick Leahy is kind of the champion, you know, the business development guy, but he's also an excellent architect himself. And anyway, we, we were very fortunate to stumble across Patrick. He's very enthused about what we're trying to do. So part of our proposals, what I'm trying to say here, is, is uh, an incredible building. Mm. Actually, two incredible buildings, wow. one in North and South Omaha, okay. right? And, uh, and he created them just as we wanted him to. And we made it clear to him that we were deeply committed to urban natural development, urban natural design, mm -hmm. and urban natural people. Right. right. He found that interesting. It uh, kind of gives us a consistent theme. As and, we, it's, and it's set you apart. Oh, it set us apart. Yeah. And when people f sit down and they finally take a minute and say, what's unique about it besides the fact that you see a lot of wood and metal or wood and glass, together, mm -hmm. it could be on the outside of the building, on the interior, whatever. Right. Uh, but when we tell them, <laughs> oh my God, I tell you, this, this may be the most incredible, unique value proposition I've ever had the opportunity wow. to, to talk about. And that is that in 1981, it was proven by two uh, scientists in Northern Europe. Um, they actually measured in very quantitative and scientific ways, what, what happens to our brain when we look at, visu when we look at something visual? The, the correlation or linkage between visual imagery and our, our emotions. Huh. I mean, isn't that an incredible thing? I didn't know it could be measured. I, I, well, that's right, and they took 30 years. Okay. I mean, okay. they really did, you know. But the thing that kind of broke through, the, the, the bottom line on it, because it's obviously it's complex, but, but, but the key is, is uh, novelty and contrast, okay. right? And so that if you, uh, yeah, it does. Yeah. So if you see the color black and then you see the color white and they're right next to it, obviously we know right away, it would go right to the area where the two meet. Right. We do that unconsciously. Right. Well, what happens is when we do that, it sends out kind of an energetic uh, electronic message, shall we say. Hmm. It goes through our retina, goes into the visual cortex, which is deeply embedded in our brain. And then the visual cortex stimulates and releases dopamine, which is a hormone, a, a, a kind of a feel-good hormone, into our brain and goes throughout the entire body. Huh. Can you believe that? So that's, that's why baby mobiles for the yes. little newborn are just black and white, because, yeah. they're, because they're supposed to stimulate the brain. I knew there was a reason you were on this show. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen one of those since my kids were little. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I remember that though. They were just black and white. Yeah, the the it's actually called scientifically. It's called neuroesthetics. Huh. So it's got a very precise. It's very it's very cutting edge science. Wow. Yes, and neuroesthetics is going to change architecture, design, interior design. I know this is a very there are going to people at home going. I don't believe that. Right. 
Right, I spoke to a gentleman uh, who's an expert in construction down at the Chamber of Commerce, and I told him this, he said, I don't believe it. Huh. I said, <laughs> I can show you the Nobel Prize winning yeah. research yeah, what's there to that confirm that, yeah. right? He said, I, I, just don't, I just can't believe it. I said, here's the thing. Some of you are marketers, some of you understand that um, if you can tell somebody, come to Omaha, come to Nebraska, whatever, our neighborhood, our downtown, whatever, good vibes. Good vibes. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I mean, we're not. This isn't hyperbole. This is for real. An amazing well, thing. I can see your jaw dropping on the <laughs> desk right now, and I won't. I won't. Uh, anyway, so we we submitted, um, you know, a proposal that was fairly detailed and lengthy, uh, not just about the building design, which is right. urban natural, water coming in and out, you know, all kinds of very interesting things that would kind of uh, enhance flow and, and rapid learning. Did you kind of encapsulate the whole concept of urban? The natural? whole concept, okay. see, all the values. If you're going to be a, a, an occupant in, uh, in this building, for instance, we call it Urban Natural Institute. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah, Urban Natural Institute. And it's going to be a 501c3. It's going to be a nonprofit. Really? profit Absolutely. Okay. And there will be training, free training. If you're a tenant, you move your office in there or set up your little company in there, every Friday afternoon, you're going to come down for an hour and a half, two hours, and you're going to get some incredible training for free. Huh. How to succeed in business, et cetera, et cetera. That's a whole new twist on... Isn't it? Yeah, you, you, you don't get any of those kinds of add-ons when you fill out a, a real estate... Right, you know, right. A, a, a lease agreement. agreement. Exactly. Right. So. We're really excited about That's Urban nice. Natural Institute. We That's hope good. that the uh, folks, that the powers that be, will, will choose to uh, work with us. It's a $26 million proposal. Yeah, quite a building, wow. quite yeah. a building. And we think it can make quite a difference in both those communities. That sounds, that sounds impressive. It, 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 what I, a I, ton I of work. I mean, for, huh. on, you on should the have, And Patrick Leahy and Emergent, they really stepped up. I mean, they came out of the blue. I said, this is it. Well, this is a, this is a convergence of energy, creative energy, and we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Wow. Yes. So we're going to talk for a, a couple seconds right here uh, about the show being sponsored by uh, Urban Natural America, okay. uh, as you might guess, and then we'll get right back, and we're going to talk about the thing that most people are talk, you know, concerned about when we sit down with them right now in these anxious, uncertain times, inflation, recession, stagflation, what, you know, who, what, what do we do, right? And we're going to talk about that, okay. and uh, we've got a document called Jumpstart that will kind of be the catalyst for that discussion. Okay. It had a few ideas on it from what I saw. Well, it few. had a few. a few. 26 years. 26 years of case studies wow. that have been extracted from Wall Street Journal and many other business publications. So it's documented. It's not just theory. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Bruce Aaron, thank you so much for doing a great job in the first half of our show here in Wild Biz, Nebraska. My name is Lynn Hinderocker, and I'm excited to be with you here. And I talked to you that this entire show is brought to you by Urban Natural America, ladies and gentlemen. Now. You might want to go to the website and chat, you know, check it out while I'm visiting with you. If you have your smartphone nearby, it is U-R-B-A-N-A-T-U-R-A-L, Urban Natural America, just as it sounds, .com. Now, what you're going to see there is, uh, is an example of neuroesthetics, how buildings can actually stimulate positive feelings in the people that are walking by, looking at the building, or stepping into the lobby of an office and going, Wow! In fact, Spreetail, I'm going to give you one example so it doesn't sound too theoretical. Spreetail and Lincoln, one of the hottest companies in the entire state of Nebraska, if you go into their lobby in Lincoln, Nebraska, and kind of walk in and just say hi, as, as I did, what you'll see is the, the floor is industrial. That would be the urban thing. And it's polished slick, so it's like you know, shiny cement on the floor, right? But then the walls are all vintage wood, right? porous, open pour wood. Uh, the reception desk, same thing, all, all, all wood, right? And then, of course, you see the coffee tables and the sofas and so on. Again, industrial metal holding these up, and then you see wood tops. Now, what's really happening when you have these two things? You have opposites. Just take that word in your mind for just a minute. Think of opposites. What if our entire country could absorb and assimilate opposites? Mm. Politically, racially, socially, what if we saw the interdependence of the relationship between opposites, whether it's and from interior design all the way to uh, you know uh, uh, the Democratic and Republican conventions? I don't care. Right. 
The fact is we don't know how to meld opposites, but we're learning because of the urban, and the urban natural word, it's a one word, so when you combine two opposites into one cool word, I mean, it's, so, it's like a symbol of what we all must do internally, socially. It, it may unlock everything for everybody. It's kind of a metaphor for that. <laughs> it's a metaphor of where we're going and what we need to do. And by the way, if we talk about Omaha, Nebraska, we talk about uh, the issue with the racial diversity and so on, <laughs> urban natural, man. So when you say, what about Omaha? Would you think about going there? Hey, man, it's urban natural, okay? They pull it all together in Omaha, Nebraska. The diversity is so exciting. Ideas from every kind of people. Everybody is involved at the conference table. It's creative. Go to Omaha. Check it out. You won't believe it. Urban natural Omaha. Urban natural North Omaha. South Omaha. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because diversity is what we are not known for. And it's our weakest point. It's our weakest point. But here's the final idea with urban naturalism. It's not about just about contrast. It's not just about opposites, it's about interdependence. We can't really be our best until the opposite person is interacting with us. This is the key idea, this is the esoteric idea, and that's why you know me well enough to know this is what drives me every day in my life, is bringing opposites together. Urban Natural America, ladies and gentlemen, check it out, urbannaturalamerica.com. We're back to Wild Biz Nebraska, yay! <laughs> okay, so here we are with Bruce Aaron, and we've got a lot to discuss. You know, when I talk to people out there in the field, they go, you know, if I could just kind of get going a little bit. We don't know, we're just doing the same old thing. Profits are like 2%. We're making payroll, but I'm not proud of where we're at in the marketplace. Yeah. Harry down the street, he's just the same way. We just don't know what to do, yeah. you know. Everybody's just in a funk. In a of. funk. Yeah. And they're pessimistic. Yeah. And if you, if you expect something bad, you're going to get something bad. So let's talk a little bit about this document. I'm gonna throw it up in front of the camera. And by the way, if you're, if you're a fan of Wild Biz Nebraska, all you have to do is contact us at Nebraska and, and say, hey, I would like to have a copy of this Jumpstart document because it is, ladies and gentlemen, the way to go, and you'll see right here on the cover of this image, it's the way to go from one side of the chasm to the other. This is very important. It's symbolic as, as many of the things that we talk about are. But how do you jump across? Well, it takes a certain amount of energy and a certain amount of new information. How do we do it? New information, right? So let's take a look at it briefly, okay. and we'll talk about how to jumpstart your company. By the way, this document, like I said, is available to you at no charge if, in fact, you're watching our show. So we'll start off right at the top here. You've got your document with you. I'm going to kind of just say the top, let's say the, the, the three things that, like, prepare you for this conversation. Okay. Okay. You know, we're not, we don't just jump right in. We, kind of have to get ready, because it's big, it's big, it is. it's so big. <laughs> okay, so number one, we have to understand the basics of change management. All right, change is a huge thing. Yeah. People stick with it, uh, status quo and so on, we all know that, but uh, if, you, if you utilize business model analysis, that's a really, you know, there are nine chunks in a business model, okay? I'm not going to name them all. But, but the very first thing you do is look at every single chunk, distribution, competitors, mm -hmm. all that, right. and say, are we strong or are we weak? Are we strong or are we weak? All right? And you, and you, you have to be ruthless about that. You've got to be honest. You've got to be honest. Yeah. Then organizational realignment, okay? Sometimes the sales guys are in the back of the house. They barely even feel like they're a part of the thing. Uh, you might have to move them all the way up to the very front where they say hi to everybody who walks in the building. I mean, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah. Right. Maybe uh, the relative importance. And then finally, leadership training. I didn't say management training. I said leadership training, mm. right, which is character building as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we got to do that. Then secondly, create a cultural readiness and receptivity to outside in thinking. Tell me what you, what you think that would be. Imply. I've, I've experienced it because I've, I, I was in a company years ago that went through cultural changes like this and that was the hardest part of the whole thing because people are used to the way it's always been done yeah. and you know then maybe they're settled in but to but to kind of rethink is much harder but I, I'll tell you what if you can get past that it's yeah. huge I mean it's, it's a great thing to do. But it could be like a fresh of you know like mint air coming into a room you know it's like you just feel <laughs> yeah. energized. Yeah. 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 I, and you've really got, but you've got to open yourself up to be open to outside in thinking. You're yeah. Right. That's yeah. 
You know, you know when I've managed these kinds of processes in the past, I also had to, had to like, <clears throat> I had to create some fear. And I also had to create some joy hmm. at opposite ends of the continuum, yeah. say. Say, if you decide to continue moving forward pretty much the way you are, you'll be okay for a little while, right? But you're gonna, you're gonna walk right off the chasm. Yeah. You're right off the edge of the cliff. Uh, these guys are coming, these guys are coming, they're adding new products, these guys here got a new president. They're coming after you. You don't see them in this room, but they're coming. Yeah. You tell them, they, they, hear, they, they hear that a couple of days, they go, I believe he's, what he's saying. Well, it's true. It, it's I mean, absolutely If you're not moving true. forward, you're not, right. you know. Yeah. I said, but there's joy waiting on the other side. That's right. <laughs> okay, so anyway, then the last one, just getting ready, examining case studies and tactics by the way, this jump start would be not a bad place to begin there, right? right. Using you successfully by other companies, thus creating a template or some kind of a model for moving forward. Mm -hmm. You have to have some kind of a roadmap. You have to know that somebody else has succeeded by yeah. doing this or that. Yeah. Here's a quick example, by the way, Sony. Sony, you know, just not long ago, just a few years ago, Sony was embedded in many product categories. Mm -hmm. There were Sony TVs, Sony phones, Right. You know, really a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. And they were high quality, you know, they were losing money. They didn't do well. For 20 years, they had them, they were embedded in all these categories. That was part of their identity, yeah. see? And they finally had to do what we're discussing here, and they threw it all out except for gaming. Gaming became their, their, their focus, see? And they did just gaming, and they fired the CEO, I mean, this, it was a tumultuous thing. But now they're very, finan very successful yeah. financially and so on. You hear that and you think about it and you think, and you said tumultuous, that's the key word. At, at the, it's easy to look back on it now and go, oh, that all worked and it was great. But man, at the time, when oh, they're in the, the middle time. of it, that's, that's tough. People envision losing all their money and having their house taken away from them. I mean, they, you know, they go right to that, right. So, all that, you know. All right, so, so now we, 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 we begin, step one. Right, this would be like meeting number two with the whole organization, okay. right? And the purpose of our being here, ladies and gentlemen, is to generate energy for transformation. Generate energy. So it's a very interesting, because most of them by this time are like, you know. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, you know, worried about the future. So here we go. Confront reality. Let's get it out there right away. Whatever evidence there's a problem and uh, create and allocate resources. So right off the bat, we're going to bolster the marketing department over here and expect them to generate interest in what we're all about. Right. And we're going to take some of our money away from distribution, the warehouses, some of the guys that move trucks around. We're going to focus and we're going to sell a lot of it over the web instead of distributing it to retail stores. I mean, that'd be an example. Right, right. We're going we're to move the resources around. We're going to raise the bar. Yeah. We're now, not going to let you slide anymore. No, gotta, no mediocrity here, no. right? Because we will fail for sure. Yeah. It's going to be tough anyway, frankly, to succeed. But we have to have a clear idea what mediocrity or excellence really is. Yeah. That's a big deal. Because there's a whole bunch of people out there going, well, uh, I think I'm pretty excellent. Let me tell you this real quick. This is, this is for real, and we'll have to wrap the show up so far with this. But Jumpstart is an exciting thing. We'll come back to this. Yeah, that's a good But listen good to this. To listen to this. And this is, this is going to blow your mind. Manager, there's a survey, big research thing went out. They talked to uh, owner, talked to managers, and talked to employees, workers. Okay. And they asked the managers, they said, on a spectrum of uh, one to 10 or whatever, how would you grade yourself as a manager? Okay. okay. And 80% uh, uh, of them said they were either excellent or outstanding. 80%, hmm. okay, here we go. I think I know same, where this is going. Yeah, same <laughs> thing. Now, we ask all the workers. Right. How, is your, how are your managers? Mm -hmm. 8% yeah. said, said uh, uh, good or excellent. Yeah. All right. Now, the gap has to be so frightening, uh, I, 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 I bet they peed their pants. But what a revelation, because, I mean, but they have to be, again, it keeps coming back to honesty. Right. They have to be honest with themselves. And that's where it has to all start, is that at the top in leadership for well, anything like this to work. Now, kind of let, let's pretend, as, as we do all the time, that <laughs> we're the third party watching, peering into the situation. Okay. Fly right. on the wall. Yes. What do we do for this organization when those numbers and the gap between them are thrown up on the wall? 
What do we do? They're going to go, uh, they have some consultants. Uh, you got any ideas? <laughs> and the managers will say, well, you need to train those employees. I hear that a yeah, lot. A lot of finger pointing. Right. And then the employees go, you need to train the managers. Yeah. Right. So we have a very interesting, I, it's not just generational, it's a paradigm shift. I know, I know most managers, uh, especially in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, their attitude is command and control. Right. I'm the boss, you do what I say, I expect you to get this done by this and this, such a time, I don't want to hear anything you know, other than what I just said, go to the back of the house, get her done, whatever it takes, and I'm on to the next thing. Okay. And, and if you're Gen Y or Gen Z, you're going, when do we collaborate? Yeah, and Ooh. then you factor in remote working. Right, which makes even greater distance, <laughs> right. emotional distance. Right, right. And, and that person sitting at home going, I don't know this jerk. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to give him what he wants. He can't hurt me. There's Only not my a, doggy down here can hurt me. There's not the sense of team or allegiance or no. anything. Yeah. No, no emotion, no context. Right. That's the other thing. It, there's so, so you can't be an empathetic manager uh, to somebody who's just been, uh, they've just lost their child or their wife walked out or something like that. Right. You have no idea what context is. Just like, here's the task, do it. So, so, so bottom line, wrapping up this section of our jump, uh, jumpstart uh, conversation, basically managers want productivity. Employees want wellness, mental health. Fulfillment. Grace, yeah. fulfillment, yeah. a sense of okayness. Yeah. We'll be right back next week. You got to look out for Wild Biz Nebraska. We're coming at you with information <laughs> you are dying to get. I'm here with Bruce Sarant. He's a revelation <laughs> in and of himself. So thank you so much for watching us. I'm Lynn Hinderocker. We'll see you next time on Wild Biz Nebraska. We've got so much more for you focusing on the key issues right now at this precarious time in our regional economy. Thanks again. See you next time.